Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk through one last example in some of my unintentional series of error bar utilizations. So in this one, what I've found as a current feature limitation in the Power BI native visual space, at least as of today, is that we have error bars as a great way to show comparison values against any of our standard ones. However, we have the limitation where today, for a visual that we can see in front of us here, we don't actually have an option to add an error bar to a stacked column chart. However, there are some methods for actually doing that. So as you can see in front of us here, there is the possibility to be able to actually do this. So I wanna show you the technique to be able to actually use a certain type of native visual to achieve this effect in Power BI. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to start with, I want to show you the problem that we have in terms of the limitations for the current native visuals. Now, at some point, I'm sure this will change um, coming from Miguel Myers and his team with all the native visuals. But as of today, if you wanted to say add an error bar variance to the total that you have for a stack column, that is not available that we have in the visual options under format. We can do a reference line, but nothing to actually do a comparative. The only way to do that on the bars themselves normally you'd have to do a clustered column chart on one of those. But the problem is each one of these individually isn't the grand total. So I wanna show a variance of all of these collectively together. This is a total amount, you know, 28 million, 26 million, and so on, with some comparative value. But as we see, not an actual way to do that. There actually is a fairly easy way to do this. So the result, if we actually use a little bit of clever usage of some of the other visual types, we can achieve that exact result. We have the same 28 million and there clearly seems to be an error bar or a comparative value that has been attached to this with also um, a tool tip that shows the proper comparison for that. Now, the way to get this is actually using a combo chart with a line. So let's walk through how I actually created this. I'm gonna come down to start and select this visual and we're gonna take this from a stacked column chart over to a line and stacked column chart. So in this case, we have the visual here. And now again, there's no error bar yet, but we have a line Y axis. Now what we need to do is we need to put in here the comparative value that we're essentially going to compare this grand total in this column to. This could be a forecast budget plan, whatever is something that you want to compare this stack column to, whether or not it's above or below. So we are going to take the comparison value here. I'm gonna add it to the line Y axis. And now it starts with simply having in here a line that's gonna appear. Now, we don't technically need the line itself. We just need the place where it is on the chart. Also, just make sure that your secondary axis is turned off. Um, we wanted to share the same axis with the column chart so it's gonna be above or below it appropriately. So in that case, we're gonna to go to lines. Um, it's already a color that I want to use, but this is where you'd change the color if you needed to. But go ahead and just turn the line off entirely. You don't even need the line. I just want the markers. So markers here, turn that on as a dot, and I'm going to go to shape, and I'm going to change this to any marker shape that you'd like. So this is just going to be the, the final point that it's going to connect to. I find that the error bar normally uses a um, kind of a hash mark like this, so I'm going to set it to that. Let's go ahead and increase this to 12 have a bit of a thicker value. Now, the trick is when we add the error bar, we're not adding an error bar from the column grand total, we're adding an error bar from the line total. Now, what we do need to ensure that we have is a single measure that is the combination of all of these, whether or not that's coming from the column legend with the you know, totals broken out. In this case, I do have three separate measures for accrued, existing, and new. And this comparison measure, which is the line now, Accrued, existing, and new technically is just this one measure. Now you can either have like a column that has it. I just added the three of these together to get a total value, but that's what's going to go in the error bar because I need to know what the distance is from here to the top of this. So I just need a measure that has 28 million, 26, so on and so forth. So however you determine that is up to you, but that is what's needed for the error bar from your comparison line. So turn that on, take one pop it into the upper bound, it's now connecting the two of them. So it looks like the error bar is coming from 
the column, but it's technically actually going down from the, um, the line itself. That's why the little marker is here, but we can edit this a little bit. So I'm going to come down to markers. I'm going to turn that off. I never really like the white border that much, so I'm going to turn off the white border. I'm going to make this match the color of the line. And then I also, because I don't want the error tooltip, the line already has a tooltip for this. So turn that off. And then what we're given is now the value from the line itself, the little error bar that's connecting those, and that will always line up with this. And we even, I would say as an added bonus, down here we get the comparison line indicated in the legend. Normally, if I didn't have this, if I was to add an error bar on this, uh, the clustered column chart, the error bar sadly doesn't get added to the legend, so you'd have to have like a special overlaid image for the legend or something else. So I actually do like that as a little bit of an added bonus to this. But it's a really nice way to add that comparison. And um, you could do a few things with this. So you could actually add it with the hash um, mark that you see here. If you wanted to, you could turn that off and make this into just an, a solid error bar itself. If I was to come down here, and I think the maximum is 10. So you could just add the bar on its own if you really wanted to. So it's up to you how to design and customize this um, to your liking. And as I mentioned, there are some new features that are coming out soon for the error bar. So you actually, at one point, will be able to do alignment. You will actually get an error bar entirely for the, um, the top of a stacked column and a few others. But I think this is a really nice and fairly quick and easy way to add those. Now, the last thing that I'll mention too, just as a little bit of a fun calculation is I did add a count group. So one thing that I do like to do sometimes is a year to date total where you can actually have this grow into the full year value. So in this case, this is now a static uh, value that we have just across for the full year value as it grows into it um, throughout the year for these values and how close does it get from start to finish. So it, it does show how that gap gets closed. That also just does it at the quarter level here, where each quarter has a quarter target as well. Um, I'll briefly show the DAX calculation for this, but it's just other ideas of how you could use the error uh, line and error marker to show uh, the comparative value growth into some of those. So if I come over to here to uh, the model view and I look at year to date, I basically have two calculations. There's the comparison FY, which just, again, ignores the months. So you get the full calendar year. A comparative value and then there's just the dates year to date so i basically look for the measure name if it's the comparison measure for the calc group it's the comparison full year otherwise it's just the year to date growth calculation that way i didn't have to make a whole bunch of new measures i just had a calc group that does this um, but mostly designed to help represent out of the way you could look at the data you could look at it monthly quarter to date or year to date for that but overall um, again i found this as a nice elegant simple solution at least for being able to add the marker to a stacked column chart, which isn't available yet today. We'll be getting that someday in the future, but this is a nice solution for that. And again, with the, for me, the added benefit is A, we get the legend down here, and B, because the error bars labels don't have the customization to change the label title yet, this also is another way where we can make sure that it's not called upper, it's going to be called comparison in this case. So another added benefit for that. Overall, as always, let me know your comments down below in the comments section. Um, let me know if, how you might want to use this in yours, or if you have any suggestions for this video, other ways you might improve this, or any suggestions for a future video. And as always, check out some of my videos here in the upper left, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow organically, and I will see you all in my next video.